I'm gold and I can air dribble. Is that good? Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Okay, 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 go, 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 go! Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can go from being this guy to this guy. But just before the video starts, guys, today I finally announced the release of my brand new Rocket League course on Gamers Ready, the ultimate guide to teamwork in Rocket League. I've been working on this thing for the past eight months, since like June of 2020, so you have no idea how excited I am. If you want to get better at Rocket League, this is for you. I know for sure, no matter what rank you are. I've already given it to some other grand champions, and they were a little hesitant at first because they weren't sure how much value they were going to get out of it, but by the end, they were just completely impressed by how much they learned. At the same time, I explain it in a way that a gold or platinum player can understand it just as well and immediately start applying it into their games. We cover everything from communication, rotation, passing, improving as a team, and everything in between. Also, the first 100 people to get the course and use code WAITIN50 will get 50% off their order. And even if you're not in the first 100, you can still use code WAITIN for 20% off. So if you're at all interested, please click the link in the description or the pinned comment. There's more info on the main page, and it would seriously mean a lot to me because I put so much work into this and I'm really happy with how it came out. But anyway, let's get back into the video. An air dribble can be broken up into two parts, the setup and the carry. When you look at it this way, it'll be much easier to visualize. For this video, I'm breaking it up into steps for each part so you can learn how to practice it even if you haven't tried it before. After explaining how the air dribble itself is performed in its most basic form, we'll move over to the advanced stuff where I'll show you some variations you can add to it that progress in difficulty. So by the end, we'll be talking about how to do more advanced stuff like what you're seeing on your screen now. Just like in my dribbling video, I've got a training pack to help go along with this whole thing. Since we're just working on the setup, let's completely forget about the carry itself for now. A good setup is one that puts the ball high enough to where you can easily get underneath it, but it obviously doesn't go so high to where it hits the ceiling. So when you're first starting out, this is what your ideal setup should look like. Let's break it down. For the first shot in the pack, the ball is stationary in front of you. The reason for this is because the initial dribble toward the wall is something that you're going to have to do on your own in a real game, so that dribble is part of the setup, and it's actually the first step. For this part, you can either use ball cam or car cam, it's not a big deal, I prefer car cam. And I don't think there's too much explanation needed for this, just dribble the ball toward the wall at roughly the speed you're seeing me do it. Can you do that? I hope so, because that's the easiest part of the whole thing. Next, you'll need to switch to ball cam if you weren't on it already and add a small brake tap just before you go up the wall. The ball should continue going at the same speed it was while you were pushing it, but now your car is going a little slower. The point of this is not necessarily to slow your car down, which is something that you're doing, but it's not the point. The real point is to create space between the ball and your car, and there's no other way to do that than just tapping the brakes. Make sure you're tapping just a tiny amount so the car's momentum isn't just completely gone. Try and replicate what you're seeing me do on screen now. Hopefully you can do this as well because it's not that much harder. And again, you should be on ball cam for this. The next step is to build your momentum again and hit the ball. So immediately after creating that space, you need to boost toward the ball again and hit it while it's on the wall to pop it out. Make sure you're not hitting it too early though while it's still on the ramp or it won't pop off the wall at all. You shouldn't have to do any turning since the ball is lined up perfectly in front of you, so don't worry about that either. Once you can do that consistently, you can now add one more brake tap after getting your touch on the ball. So everything is the same, but immediately after you pop the ball off the wall, you will just do another brake tap. It should look something like what you're seeing on your screen now. So, so far, we've got a normal dribble at this speed, and then you switch to ball cam and do a small tap of the brakes. Then you boost to build your momentum up again, and you pop the ball off at the right spot, and then tap the brakes again. Okay, hopefully if you simplify it this much and look at these steps in this way, you're still with me, because this next part is the most difficult. After doing that second brake tap on the wall, you jump off and immediately roll your car to be flat in the air and start boosting toward the ball like you would for a normal aerial. It's simple to explain, but is probably the first step that actually requires some practice to be put in. By the way, in case it's not obvious, air dribbles are way harder than aerials, so if you don't know how to aerial, you should definitely learn that first. 
But anyway, if you're struggling on the transition from wall to air here, try and get the motion down first without any ball in free play. And then you can go back and try it again with the ball once you're comfortable. If you can jump, boost, and air roll all at the same time on this transition, that's a good sign that you're getting comfortable with it. At first, if you're struggling, your objective should just be to touch the ball in the air, whether it's going toward the goal or not. But once that's too easy, you can try hitting it in the goal each time. No need to try and get multiple touches on it though. Just get one solid touch to put it in the goal. It'll take some time to practice, but once you can do this, you now know how to set up the ball for an air dribble. Next up is the carry. For this part, for the sake of simplicity, let's throw the setup out the window so you don't clutter your brain with too many things. So shot number two in this pack already has the ball rolling to the wall for you. So you can basically skip all the way to the part where you're popping the ball off the wall. That's your starting point when practicing the carry. The difference in this part though is that I don't want you to do the second break tap on the wall. As you hit the ball, I want you to jump, boost, and air roll to be flat all at the same time. This will allow you to actually carry the ball instead of just getting one or two solid touches in the air like previously. It eliminates that gap between the ball and your car in the air. This will be extremely difficult when you start out, so don't worry about carrying it in any direction. Just try and match the speed of the ball by feathering your boost and gradually pushing it in the direction you want, while also keeping it in the air for a little longer, so you're kind of hitting it at this diagonal angle. There's no specific sweet spot that works best for this every time, since it varies depending on your speed, momentum, and angle, but it's something you'll get a feel for the more you practice it. Practicing the carry will take many hours to be comfortable with, so just don't worry about actually scoring it until you're ready for it. Then you can try carrying it in the specific directions you want. And in case it's not clear, don't spin around while you're doing this. Just keep everything simple and only tap air roll for a split second when necessary. Once you're comfortable with carrying the ball toward the goal somewhat consistently, you're ready to combine the setup with the carry. Combining these two parts really is as simple as it sounds. So restart the training pack and go back to shot one where the ball is right in front of you. This time, instead of doing the setup and then doing that second break tap on the wall, take what you learned about the carry and apply it here too. There really aren't any tips for this part either, it just comes down to practicing it and bridging that gap between the two parts. Once you can do that, you can now successfully air dribble! Yay! 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 Yeah! <clears throat> anyway, let's move on to some variations that you can do from here. Perhaps the most useful variation on air dribbles is the simple pretend like I have no boost shot. This one works really well even up to grand champ level in ones, and it's so easy to do. You simply do everything like you would for a normal air dribble, but this time you stop boosting toward it once you reach the peak, and then you start boosting toward it again at the end to hit it over the defender. This often baits the defender into committing, but when you boost into it at the end, it just goes right over them. I highly recommend trying this one out in games if you get the chance. The best place to practice all these variations is usually in free play since it's not going to be the exact same setup every time. This might cause another jump in difficulty since you're so used to that exact same angle for the setup that's in the training pack, but that's all the more reason to use free play from now on. No setup will be exactly the same in a real game, so you need to get used to every little inconsistency. Another variation is the double tap. This one is pretty simple by concept as well. The idea is you carry it to the backboard and then finish it off with a final touch. The main problem that most people run into with this one is that they don't give themselves enough space to get the angle for the shot. You'll often see people do it like this, and obviously that angle they have to shoot from is way more difficult than it should be. So when you're doing this one, the main ideas are carry it higher than normal and give yourself some more space than you think you need by boosting backward more. Normally, the best scenario to go for a double tap from an air dribble is when you're starting from all the way on your defensive half so you have more space to build up that forward momentum. It just makes it easier to give yourself more space. Another variation is the air dribble bump. In its basic form, it's just an air dribble, but you fly in front of it at the end to block the defender's path to it. If you do this right, there's almost nothing the defender can do about it. It's called the unstoppable move for a reason. So it feels great when you do get it right. If you want to dive deeper into air dribble bumps, I have a video about it already so you can check out that card in the top right. Of course, there are other variations you can add to air dribbles like flip resets and such, but when it comes to those, it takes an entire video to explain it since it's such a complex mechanic. So that's pretty much everything I have about air dribbles. If you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any more videos. Check out my course on Game is Ready through the link in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later!